Okay, so let's talk really quickly about two very simple yet kind of unrelated ideas that will have a significant impact on your ability to succeed with a niche community. And when I use the phrase niche community, um, I'm, I'm using that as a broad umbrella uh, for a marketplace, a directory, a listing style site, a local uh, community, or a, you know, like a circle like a community, like a, a, a community that has a, um, you know, like a, a forum or a, a Facebook group style approach that you're building on something like circle. All right. So the, now these ideas are really, you know, set up to help you sell services, right? So my whole approach is to use the authority site or the niche community to actually sell back-end services to our members. So I'm not building this sort of site or community to actually just get lots of featured listings or, you know, charge a monthly fee for members to be on a directory. It's to actually use the site itself to demonstrate authority or thought leadership in a niche market locality uh, marketplace, vertical industry, or otherwise. So these two ideas are going to be really salient for those of you who are trying to do the same thing. So number one is the art of irresistible offers. And this is something you really need to sort of work through and tweak and optimize and improve by dint of trying many things. So, you know, the core I, uh, you know, approach is to just keep stacking the value until it's harder for people to say no than it is for them to say yes. So if you make it empirically, um, you know, if you're really filling a need in your niche and you're offering something that solves a problem or fills a hole that is really obvious or evident in your niche and it's not a fake thing it's something that really is true like the example I like to give is you know one of the first local restaurant sorts of sites that I built with several other people was a sushi uh, uh, directory in a very hyper local resort area where I lived over the course of several summers and one of the very obvious things about that that niche was that all of those really popular sushi restaurants had no website. They had they had like zero website. They would be sending people to these sort of outside platforms to order and there was just no website and it was really both annoying as someone who really likes sushi like to be, you know, like trying to look at a, at a at, you know at at a restaurant's sort of online branding. But it, it's also like really, um, it's just bad business for them, right? So there was an empirical need that they needed a website. It wasn't me like making that up and trying to sell something fake. It was like saying, hey, you guys really need a website. And when you get this featured listing on our community, which is going to be XYZ amount of dollars for the year, you're, we're also going to give you a website and it was just a very simple card style website that took literally 20 minutes to make that was customized for each particular you know business so you aren't just sending building the same thing for everybody you can do this on WordPress you can do this on Squarespace it doesn't need to be card card just makes it really really affordable or as you know I did a, a video recently on uh, building link tree style landing page la landing pages with card. It's the same idea. You could just you know it, it takes literally 20 minutes to do that. And for a business that doesn't have a website like these particular sushi restaurants, for an example, it was like irresistible for them to say, all right, well, it's gonna it's gonna be three hundred dollars for the year to have this featured listing, and there's only fifty restaurants in this whole resort area, and it was you know a, a resort area that extended over a number of, of beach towns, so you know you don't want to be you don't want to miss out on this. You don't want to be not listed when all these folks are, you know, all these other folks are there. And oh, by the way, 
you know, you add those other restaurants, you seed the site with a few other real popular places first. So when you're reaching out to like the, you know, the B grade sushi restaurants or the or the ones that aren't necessarily as popular, I'm, I, when I say B grade, I'm not talking about the food, but you know, some of the lesser known restaurants, they see like other very popular places that are, you know, well known and very successful are already on the site, right? So the the key to that is just, you know, creating irresistible offers. And I have an exercise called niche and need, where essentially you identify your niche, and then you write down three things they empirically need that you can offer. Another example I often give is like in the mindfulness space, which is, you know, a big part of our own target market now in 2021. You know, lots of the people that I speak to want to teach a course, they want to write a book, they want to create a podcast. You know, they they have this creator driven mindset, but they're therapists or counselors or mental health professionals. So they don't have the first clue how to start, right? So they have this, you know, this, this real kind of bucket list drive, they want to actually, you know, write a book before they retire, or they want to, you know, create a podcast around a specific sort of mental health uh, you know, uh, uh, process that they use in their practice. And if you know how to do those things, and you can say when you join our community, you get access to all this training, and we'll walk you through writing the process of writing a book in a 30 day challenge, we'll show you how to build a podcast in 60 days, uh, in this particular space and in, in the community. This is where using something like circle can be really, really helpful. And it's one of the reasons that I um, recommend and I'm using circle on several projects now because you can really create these spaces that are siloed around uh, you know your members needs and wants anyway without getting too sort of blabbery which is what I'm doing now the art of irresistible offers just keep stacking the value until people stop saying no right if you just say hey join our community and pay fifty dollars a month and we'll give you a, a listing you're going to get most people to say no if you say you know it's fifty dollars plus we'll give you a website you're start you're going to get some people to say yes if you say we're going to give you a website and we're going to give you an interview, which we publish to our Facebook group and to our newsletter list of 25,000 other mental health counselors and professionals, you're going to get more people to say yes. If you then tell them you're going to help them sell their, you know, set up a podcast or create a course or write a book, and then you're going to actually promote that book to your 25,000 newsletter subscriber list of their ideal audience, you're going to get more people to say yes, right? So you keep stacking the value until people start finding it harder and harder to be like, well, why would I not want to join this community, right? So there you have it, the art of irresistible offers. I recommend that you actually check out our niche and need uh, exercise that really helps sort of get very clarified on exactly what it is that you can offer your quintessential client or ideal audience that they really need to succeed and that they'll actually pay you for. And this is the other thing that I've covered before, but it's really, really effective. And it's begin in beta, right? So when you're doing your email outreach, when you're starting your community, when you're launching your thing, just slap a beta tag on everything that you do, right? And the reason is there are very few problems or questions or complaints or sort of areas of confusion that your members have that can't be solved with a we're in beta. And people are very, very forgiving and they're very, um, you know, People are very understanding is probably the right word when you tell them that you've invited them to this new community that's actually in the pre-launch phase and it's not perfect yet. It's not completely ready, but they are so important to you. They are influential. They are the sort of people that you want to start with that they have a shape or a place in shaping the direction of the, of the community, they become very understanding and almost excited that they are actually joining in the imperfect phase of your 
platform or project rather than joining when everything is concretized in such a way that it's too late for them to actually shape the future of the community. One of the really interesting things that I've been reading about uh, recently that I'm very interested in exploring further is the whole idea of Web3 and these communities that are actually sort of owned by their members, right? So the people who actually join these communities actually have a voting uh, have voting privileges and rights, and they have sort of ownership in the future of the community. And there's all kinds of cool derivations and permutations and ways in which this idea can be really, it's going to transform the way we work on the web, certainly, and in the world at large, no doubt. And even things like, you know, books, right? I mean, you can actually create these um, communities where your fans or your followers or the people who are buying your books are able to shape the direction that some of the stories go, right? So by dint of buying ownership in a you know book launch, they can, or a community that is tailored around um, you know fans or followers of a certain series. Let's say I don't write fiction, but let's say that was the case. These people have this ownership in how this, the, you know, this is a creative sort of limitation. And again, I don't write fiction, but, you know, the idea that an author would take the advice, let's say, of some of the suggestions that come from the community. Well, it's all the same sort of idea here, right? That you can, you know, when you begin in beta, I don't care what sort of community you're building, you're giving your audience ownership in some way over the future of your platform. And people are, you know, like I've had experiences and I've used this before in other recordings. This is true, where somebody, one of the first sites, the first site I ever built, someone said to me, you need me more than I need you. And she was right, right? It was an obnoxious thing to say, and she was probably an obnoxious human being, but she looked at the 12 people that were on the site, and I didn't know what I was doing at the time, and she's like, yeah, why would I join your community? I'm somebody who has a little bit of a name in the niche, and, you know, I don't need you. I mean, there's not, there's nothing here for me that I don't already have going for myself. So, you know, when you tell the same person, hey, we're in beta, and you're one of the first people we're inviting to participate in this platform, and we want to give you a real kind of seed interest in the future of how this thing goes. Oh, but by the way, you know, you are going to be paying. I mean, you don't have to give it away for free. You're giving away this sort of founding member privilege to people like that. And I was too dumb at the time to know what to say to her other than to be sort of defensive and, you know, kind of you know, uh, F you sort of, you know, uh, attitude towards what she said, you know, but the, the way to circumvent that problem is just to be, you know, begin in beta, right? Have this idea that anything that someone says to you, like, Hey, why is this not ready yet? Ma'am, we're still in beta, Mo you know, Mike, we're in beta, uh, Maggie, we're in a, our beta launch phase. We're not launching actually the first version until February 2022. Whatever it is that you say when you use this begin in beta in the seed site, you know, seeding the site phase, people tend to be really, really understanding and actually appreciative of that uh, idea. You're about to hear three dogs bark like crazy, so hopefully I'm going to finish this before that starts. Um, yeah, anyway, so I covered that a little bit here as well. So those are two very sort of different things, irresistible offer, uh, the irresistible offer approach, right, which is really highly recommended when you're doing outreach, and the begin and beta approach, which is also, I never do something like this without having those three words in the, you know, the at least the three-month period before the site looks like it deserves a, you know, like a true, um, you know, like it, 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 until there's enough people and activity and interaction and engagement that people actually, you know, want to join without you needing to persuade them that the platform is worth their time 
attention and you know expenditure. Okie doke. So there's you know there's a lot more uh, to this. I've covered this stuff many times before with the you know the seeding the site and annual packages and all that other stuff. But for today, that's really it. I've gone five minutes longer than I expected. Begin in beta and the art of irresistible offers. Again, this applies primarily to outreach in the first three months of launching something new. And I think you'll find it's a super helpful heuristic for really getting your uh, platform published and profitable far quicker, far quicker, far more quickly than most. Teach what you know, do what you love, wake up the world with your work. Thank you so much as always for listening and have a wonderful night.